Cat, it's Maximus here. Here's a video about the Makita 6013BR. This is Makita's more or less famous spade handle drill. They actually did have heavier duty spade handle drills, but of course, here in the United States, the domestic brands really dominated the uh, heavier duty uh, portable electric drill market, like that Milwaukee video. But this wasn't targeted to try to unseat or to directly compete with the Milwaukee. It was just designed to be a more upgraded Makita over, say, the pistol grip drills. And a lot of people do like these just because they have a good RPM, a good amount of power, 6.3 amps, 550 RPM. With Makitas, it is a year and month. So it's easy to date them. 2002 on this unit. Obviously not that bad. Fiberglass reinforced polycarbonate housing. One of the ways you know it's polycarbonate is because Sharpie does, if it's nylon, sharp, the chemicals in Sharpie will actually bond with the plastic. You'll never get it out. But that doesn't happen with polycarbonate. Yeah, <laughs> I did get it for a good price. And so this was one of Makita's more popular heavy duty drills. And uh, I can see why people liked it. One thing I don't like, even got the manual, is this handle is not fixed. There's no way to stop it from spinning. And there's a reason nobody does that, or even manufacturers, we can change the position of the handle, have a way to lock it down, because when you're doing using this for mixing, then you want the handle to stay in one position instead of being stuck to use this. This ring here actually is a standard size, and we can see it has a hex spindle, so you could actually put the right angle attachment. I even believe the Milwaukee ones are compatible, they're just using the same sizing. Anyway, this was Makita's heavy duty drill. So it wasn't designed to really up unseat the heavier duty Milwaukee's or Black & Decker's, etc. And Makita came out with this in 1984. I found some 1984 documented documentation. So Makita made this thing for 25 years before going with their newer generation, which I think are made in China. This one is interestingly enough, Makita Canada, made in Whitby, Ontario. So, this is a Canadian <laughs> Makita tool, interestingly enough. It does have a chuck key, but it is a cheaper stamp chuck key, even though Makita wanted the equivalent around $200 on this tool. It was kind of expensive. And what I mean by stamped is if you get a high-quality original Jacobs uh, industrial chuck key, you can see that they're machined and has much better teeth. Interestingly enough, and Makita's had drill chuck identi <laughs> identity issues, this, if I can... Oh, I, we are. It's a genuine Jacobs chuck. It's a 33BA, and I can see why they use it, because they're using a larger one than, say, what they had here, which was, this is the uh, 6302H. This is their heavy-duty pistol grip drill, and that's really what this was for. This wasn't a, this only has a half-inch spindle, not a 5.8 spindle. It does have smaller brushes on it, and it uses double reduction instead of triple reduction gearing. I'm going to use a nicer chuck key. It has a slightly thicker rod, so it actually holds in real nice there. Other than that, that's really what it was supposed to be. And you'll say, well, what are the stats? And this is what I mean by an upgrade. Is if we look at the 6302H, come on now, camera, 6.5 amps at 550 RPM. And you say, wait a minute, didn't you just show that this was 6.3 amps at 550 RPM? So technically on nameplate stats, this has slightly less power than even their pistol grip drill. But this is more heavy duty. If we do a couple comparisons, such as gearbox screw size, we can see that this uses larger screws. There's four of them, set of three of them. It The chuck on this is actually a Makita manufactured chuck or a Makita, if we can turn that, branded chuck. So it's interesting that on the bigger drill, they went with a, general, uh, a genuine Jacobs chuck. We can actually see the chuck if we get them next to each other. The chuck on the bigger drills is a little heavier duty, bigger gearbox, screws, larger reduction gears that can just take more heat and have more wear or more wear resistance because of their size. It also has a larger motor spindle. This one actually still has a metal fan. And that's really what it was, is that this drill, this pistol grip drill, is pretty powerful, but it's more for intermittent use. If you're really going to do something like mixing where it's constant high loads, mixing, you know, grout, motors, even paint, all that kind of stuff, <laughs> maybe not so much paint, this was drills just to, made, 
to run at higher continuous wattage out, like for mixing or if you're just drilling a bunch of large holes over and over again, like on a construction site. And the other advantage this offered over is things like the Milwaukee's and the DeWalt's and stuff. The, their uh, de-handle drills, is, this is actually quite a bit lighter. This drill is light enough to where you, I can hold it out straight, even with my left hand, which is not something you're going to be doing with the Milwaukee's. But it also makes it more versatile. The way the gearbox is contoured, even in certain situations where you just need to drill smaller holes, you could still use this in a pinch, so it kind of made it a more utility or utilitarian drill. But you know me, I like to test things out, so let's give this a quick test. All right, we're going to see how this does. You'll hear that uh, another difference over that pistol grip drill, just much more airflow in order to sustain higher continuous heat output. Anyway, let's give this a shot into some end grain to a 916 self feed bit in the in in grain fur. We'll just do a a little test here, see how it uh, feels. Whoa! That is pretty torquey. And yes, end grain is tougher. A couple of people made some comments. Might be safer at even a lower speed. I'm going to go ahead and flip it onto a different face here. Anyway, for that inadvertent demonstration, <laughs> and I should have known better, this block of wood's pretty dry. This is not, uh, you really need sharp bits and especially good bracing when you're going in the end grain because you're just trying to cut across all the layers of that plant cellulose versus something like this on a face where you're kind of shaving and splitting it up it can be orders of magnitude the difference in amount of force and but it did go to show a point that uh, even for the nameplate stats I mean this drill is <laughs> pretty torquey And it has the easy rocker switch, so. And that's why they did the rocker switch, was just to make it easier and quicker in those types of situations. And so anyway, that's kind of a good idea of what this Makita was. It was, it was pretty good for a half inch drill, especially for Makita because their quarter tools were, uh, even though they made nice ones, most of what they sold was the cheaper stuff. These Makitas were pretty expensive and they weren't as well known a brand in the earlier decades. And uh, this was a pretty righteous drill. You know, not quite as torquey as like uh, the best uh, Milwaukee spade handles and that type of stuff. But once again, they weren't trying to unseat it. Kind of like Japanese pickup truck, you know, Toyotas and Nissans and stuff. They weren't trying to unseat Ford and Chevy. They were just... Uh, trying to fill in between niches and so for the weight of this tool that's really the advantage to it is it really is pretty solid as you can see still has plenty of torque even though the nameplate might not be the most impressive and it was a pretty nice alternative and it wasn't like that was the limit I do have a much older but this is from 1985 Makita had this whole hog and where this has like a half inch spindle <laughs> This has a 5 8 spindle, so a thicker spindle, of course, this is a whole hog, so it's the same thing, 7.5 amps at 300 RPM in low gear. So, quite literally, this Makita here has twice the torque of this one. But there are just certain inherent type of limits, because obviously a drill like this is much more dangerous. And same thing here, this isn't quite as heavy duty as the Milwaukee whole hog, but this thing uh, is definitely... Uh, has the same nameplate stats, which is surprising. It's, and so that's what Makita kind of, and like most other manufacturers, if you're doing heavier stuff where you're even blowing out this, then you need to get even bigger and heavier drills. Otherwise, you know, if, you know, finally having one of these things, whenever they're at pawn shops or even like on eBay, they're kind of overpriced. But I can see why people get attached because it's a nice uh, heavy-duty drill. That really isn't that uh, physically that heavy, so you can wield it. And they balance the power, so with the handles, although I'd like the option to be able to put it in the side. <laughs> it's kind of like their virtual spade handle, or their virtual pipe handle, that other manufacturers just standardized on. In situations where the bit catches, like what I was showing trying to drill that end grain with that self-feed bit, uh, it has enough, more than enough power to be able to do it, but it isn't just so much that 
you're just going to have no chance of even slowing it down if it does catch. This is something where you can release pretty easily and be able to still, uh, you know, prevent it from really injuring you. And I think they did strike a nice balance. It is a pretty nice drill. But if you're like con if you're a contractor mixing concrete in a wheelbarrow five days a week, you would want to get the Milwaukee 1660. It's just built heavier for that specific type of duty where the Makita is still a nice option. So if you see one of these used or something for a good price, <laughs> like I did, i definitely pick it up. Anyway, my next video is just going to be a uh, relatively short teardown. They just tend to extend the review videos too much to include teardowns of at least tools like this where you want to talk about the internals. Uh, so that'll be in the next video. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.